loves you. For the first graders, I wanted to go over something that we're going to start doing once we get to meet face to face again. And that is we have a countdown from 10 to 0. When we get to 0, everybody shouts, Jesus loves you! And then I say, Jesus loves you too. And that's how we like to start every time we get together. So we're going to count down from 10 to 0, and I want you to shout. When I get down to 0, I want you to say, instead of 0, we're going to say, Jesus loves you! Are you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Jesus loves you too. Hey, I wanted to go back over. We're gonna we're remember we're in Genesis and we're gonna go back and we're gonna re review kind of the sixth day. We're gonna camp out on the sixth day, which is at the end of Genesis one and all of Genesis two. So if you want to go ahead and open up your Bibles, that's where we're gonna be for our lesson today. But before we dive in. Hey, well, let me ask a question first before we dive in. What was created on the sixth day? That's right, we were created on the sixth day. And we're going to talk all about that today. Um, how God interacted with um, Adam and Eve you know, on that first day. So, um, we're going to do something new. Uh, something that we do every month, actually. And that is we're going to have a memory verse. And remember I said you get points for our memory verses. And so they call those memory verses the sword Bible memory uh, verses. Why do you think they call them the sword? That's right, because the Bible is a sword. And when Jesus was tempted, the way he fought temptation was, was with God's word. The Bible says, I've hidden God's word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So that's one of the things that we can do is we can memorize scripture so that um, whenever we're tempted, we can think about that and we have that hidden in our mind and in our hearts so that we don't sin. So the Bible is called a sword and it's a weapon to be used against Satan. And our memory verse for this week is found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now there's six verses on here you can see on the card. I'm going to give you five points for each of those six verses that you can say. Now, if you're in first or second grade, you probably only need to focus on that first verse. If you want to do more, that's great, but you should be at least be able to do that first verse. And then for, if you're in third or fourth grade, you should be able to challenge yourself to do verses one through three, all three verses. I'm still going to give you 15 points because that's three verses. Three times five is 15. That's right. But if you can challenge yourself and work on this, I think you could probably memorize all six verses. And it doesn't matter to me which version you use. My only stipulation is parents, um, they can't say the verse on the same day they learn it. So if they're working on memorizing a verse, um, before you write me an email to RedeemerKidsTX at gmail.com, before you write to me, an email about that and tell me they memorized it, let them wait a day and see if they can say it on the next day. So if they can say it the next day or a couple of days later, they've got it. It's locked and loaded. That's what we want. We want to memorize it, not just to be able to repeat it real fast, but to memorize it. And what are some ways that you can memorize it? I like to write it down or say it over and over again. Some people like to sing songs. Some people um, will, will create motions along to it. I'm not that great at it. I've got some other memorization tips. If you look up on YouTube, Redeemer Kids April Memory Verse. Uh, if you go to Redeemer Church Tomball on YouTube and then look for Redeemer Kids April Memory Verse. It, it's, it's a verse around Easter time, but but... If you watch that video, there's some other tips on how to memorize scripture. So again, parents, um, work on these memory verses with your kids. And then kids, if you can memorize these verses and then say them the next day, I'll give you points, five points for everyone that you can do. And uh, I'll know that you've done it uh, when you send me an email. 
Now, before we uh, move on to something else, I want to at least read the memory verse with you this time and, and make sure you understand what it is. And that's something we'll do every month. And, and we, we may review this week after week uh, and go over the verse together. But at least before you get started on this, I wanted to go through it and, and, and help you with how it relates to the, the lessons that we're doing. So the very first verse says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now assurance is kind of a hard word, but I want you to think about uh, Christmas time, and you're hoping that you're going to get a present. Do you have it yet? No, it's, 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 you're hoping for it. That's what faith is. You can't see it yet, but you're hoping that you get it. And then, but faith is a little more than that because it says the conviction of things not seen. It's kind of like having proof you, 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 or evidence that you have it. If you look at uh, it in the CSB, I, I read the Christian Standard Bible. It says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what, what is not seen. So how can you prove something if you don't have it? Well, that, that's what faith is, is trusting believing that you you will have it even if you don't have it already okay and then the second verse says for by it people of old your ancestors your grandparents people from before receive their commendation or they receive their reward right by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of god so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible remember we talked about that word ex nihilo last week, which means what? That's right, out of nothing. God created everything that there is out of nothing, right? So by faith, we understand that that's how the universe was created. And how did God create it? We said that he said it. He spoke it into existence, right? So that's the first three verses, and I want you to focus on those. And I think uh, it, it, we're going to go over uh, verses four and five and talk about people of faith, like Abraham and Abel, um, how Abel and Enoch and all those names that are mentioned there, those are stories we're going to get to as we work our way through Genesis. But I want you to skip down to verse 6 and it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe, that's the word believe, another word for faith, must believe and that he rewards those who seek him. Oh, believes that he exists. I skipped a very important word. So, and without faith, it's impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek them. So, what's one of the things you hope for as a Christian? If you put your trust in Christ, what's one of the things that we can have faith that we'll have, even though we don't have it yet or we can't see it? That's right, heaven. Heaven is one of those rewards that we look forward to and we hope for, and we have to believe that God exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. And if you seek Him, um, He will draw near to you if you seek after Him with all your heart. Um, so those are great verses to learn. They, they go along with, with uh, what we've already learned, what we'll be learning today, and what we'll be learning in the next few weeks. So what were the ingredients for creating a human? The Bible says he used dust. So I went out in the backyard and I got some dirt. So I'm gonna try to take this dirt and I'm gonna try to make a person out of this dirt. It just kind of falls through my fingers. It's not holding together at all. I mean, there's some clumpy pieces, but I can't, if I try to squeeze the, even the clumps, they just, they, they're brittle and they fall apart. So, uh, how do you make a cake? There's several ingredients. Um, the, the only ingredient in the Bible is, is dirt, but maybe, maybe the soil was moist. So let me add some water. When you're baking a cake, you have, uh, several ingredients. So now we've got dirt and water. And what do you get when you mix dirt and water together? Yeah, that's right, you get mud. So I'm gonna try 
to make a mud person. All right, so I'm gonna make, see if I can get a head. And we're gonna make some arms. We're gonna make some, some legs. It's all sticking to my fingers. I got some legs there. And maybe some feet. Ah, just on my fingers. Oh, gotta give him a hand over here. I'm gonna give him some muscles. All right. How does that look? Does that look like a person? All right, so. Then what did God do? He formed the man out of dust. And then how did he, I mean, wake up. He's not moving. How do I get him to come alive? Oh, that's right. He blew into his nostrils. So I didn't even give him a nose. I'm going to put a couple of nostrils in there. Maybe if I breathe into him, he'll come to life. What do you think? Let me try Ew, ew, I got some mud in my mouth. Yuck. Uh, yuck. Uh, so, come alive! It didn't work. I'm not God. So I wasn't able to get Mud Boy to come to life. Uh, but God did. God took mud and he made, what was his name? The first man? That's right, Adam. So, Jesus is sometimes called the second Adam, or the last Adam. See, Adam was made from the earth. Dirt. Earth, right? But Jesus, even though he was born a man, he came from heaven. And even though Adam is like a physical being, a, a, a human being, um, pinch yourself, you're a human, you've got flesh, Jesus had flesh when he was here on earth, but when he came from heaven, he was a, he was a spirit being. And he gives life to spirit, so they, he was the firstborn among the dead as well. So he lived a perfect life that makes him different than us. Um, he died for us, and when he rose again, he, get, he gave us life abundantly, um, if we'll put our trust in him. So this verse in 1 Corinthians says, And just as we have been born the image of the man of dust, all right? So each of us, we, we were born after Adam, so we came just like Adam from the earth. We're, we're flesh. Uh, we will, we will if we put our trust in him, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. Jesus is that man from heaven. So Jesus is the second Adam, Adam being the first man of earth, Jesus being the first man of heaven. We were created in the image of God, which means we can create. So I have an extra credit assignment for you. It is very simply to create something. I'm not going to give you any ideas. Well, maybe so. It can be anything. Use your imagination. You can draw, you can paint, you can create out of clay, you can make a video, you can sing a song, write a poem, create something, and send it to me at RedeemerKidsTX at gmail.com, and I'll give you 10 points. So the first thing I want us to learn from our scripture today, if you were to read the end of Genesis 1 and all of Genesis 2 with your folks after this lesson, you, you're, you're going to run across verse 28 of chapter 1. And it says this, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. See, God prescribes, just like a doctor would prescribe medicine, a, a plan, something that's good for you, God prescribes order and authority in creation. He, he put man in dominion over all of the earth. That means we're kind of the, the rulers of the earth. 
they say that the lion is the king of the jungle. Well, we're the king of the world, okay? Uh, God set us up as managers, if you will, because we don't own the earth, but we are here to manage the earth. And, and that's God's way. That's, that's how he wants it. Um, he wants things to have an order, a purpose, and authority. And who's the key authority over and above us? That's right. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's over everything. And he's put us. He's, he says, all authority has been given to me. I give it to you. Go, therefore, into all the world, baptizing and teaching them making disciples in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's, that's another part of that authority, Him giving us charge, things to do. Um, that was one of the first things that God did. The second thing I want you to see that God did is He reached out to man. Right after He created him, Adam, it says in uh, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, it says, The Lord God took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and to watch over it. And the Lord God commanded the man. He gave him a rule, something to do. You are free to eat from any tree of the garden. So he provided for him. He gave him things he could eat. Um, it says, even the wildlife, they're there for you. But you must not eat from the tree of of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat it, eat from it, you will certainly die. And why would you die? Because to, to disobey something that God tells you to do is sin. And the penalty of sin is death. So God right here, he's reaching out to man. He's putting him in a beautiful place with rivers flowing and, 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 and gorgeous trees and plants and fruits for him to eat all Seed-bearing vegetables and fruits were there for, for, for Adam to eat. But he also gave him a job to do. So would Adam know what to do if he was just placed there in the garden and God didn't tell him what to do? We'd be trying to figure out. I'd never been in. He, he was brand new. It was like being a baby. He was brand new on a brand new earth. How would Adam know what to do unless God told him what was right, told him what it was that he wanted him to do. So God gave him order. He, he set up authority, him being authority over Adam, Adam being over authority over everything else. And then he gave him a job to do, and he provided for him. He reached out to him, gave him instruction. I need to get this nail into the wood. And I need a helper. I need a tool that can help me get this nail into the wood. So I've got some helpers here. I got some tools. I thought maybe the drill would be good, huh? No. It makes lights and it turns, but maybe if I had a screw and this is a bit, it's a star shaped bit. I don't think that will work. Do you think that's a good helper? Nah, I don't think so either. Now I brought this, um, I brought this needle nose pliers. Maybe if I squeeze it and Try to push it in. No, it's not going. Anyway, I might be able to do that, but it's it's not a suitable helper. So I brought a wrench. Maybe I could turn it. No, that ain't gonna work work either. And oh, this screwdriver it might work. I've got all kinds of bits. Maybe oh, it's a nail. It ain't gonna. I don't need a screwdriver to drive a nail. What what would be a suitable helper? to get the nail into the wood. Oh, I know, what if I use the hammer? The hammer is the perfect tool for hammering a nail into wood. Why didn't I think of that sooner? So God gave Adam a big job to do, naming all the animals, working the land, uh, producing crops, taking care of the earth, this is a big job to do that God gave Adam, and, and he said, you know what? It's not good. It's not good that he doesn't have a helper. He needs a helper. So God sends all the animals past Adam, one after another, just like I was trying to find the right tool. He tried to, to take an animal that, that could be a good helper, and none of them were quite, quite the right fit. See, God creates everything for a purpose. Everything God created has a purpose. Um, there's 
like we said before, an order to things, God creates all things for His purposes. If you look forward to the, to the New Testament, it says it like this, for everything was created by Him in heaven and on earth. We talked about that last week. The visible and the invisible. He created everything out of nothing. All things have been created through Him, and here's the key word, for Him. For Him. For His purposes. For His glory. For His enjoyment. For His pleasure. There's a purpose for everything God created, and Eve is no exception. God saw that there wasn't a suitable helper for Adam to do all these things that Adam had to do, so he created Eve. Look what it says here in Genesis 2, verse 18. It says, Then the Lord God said, It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper corresponding suitable to him. Somebody that works with him well. They would be partner, good partners, ministry partners, I like to call my wife uh, and partner. So I went through that lesson pretty fast, so I wanted to do a little quick review, and then I'll pray for you, and then, and then we'll be done, okay? So the first thing we talked about is that God created man from dirt, right? It's kind of a review, day six. We talked about that last week, and we said that the first man was named Adam, and we said that we were created in God's image out of the earth. Um, God gave us life. And that Jesus is called the second Adam. He came from heaven down to earth. He was born of a physical man, but he was a life-giving spirit. Um, and he always has existed, right? Uh, so Jesus being a, a perfect being here on earth gave him the ability to die for us and be a substitute for us so that if we put our trust in him um, we can live forever and he'll give that life-giving spirit to us so he's the firstborn among the dead he will live forever and if we put our trust in him we'll be given a, a, a new body as well and we will live for forever and then uh, God has this sense of order we said he, he put Adam in the garden. He gave him a job to do. He put him in authority over the rest of the earth. We said that God, Jesus, is the authority above man, and man is author authority above everything else that has been created. And we said that God reached out to him. He took him, he put him in a nice place, he provided for him, he gave him something to do, he gave him a rules. To follow and he told him what the consequences would be if he didn't follow those rules and then last we said that God creates everything for a purpose and we talked about you know just like um, not every tool is made for the same job and uh, the animals weren't help mates for for Adam so God created Eve so we had man and woman were created on that sixth day and then God said it was very good so let me pray for us, and then we'll be done. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for all these boys and girls. God, thank you that you are a God of purpose, that you created us for a purpose, and that you set Jesus as an example for us, and that you set him in authority over us, um, that he lived a perfect life and died, that we might be able to live forever, even though we ate from the tree, which we'll learn about next week. Um, and we have sin. You made a way that we could live forever. Thank you for, for Jesus. Thank you for loving us enough to, to watch over and protect and provide for us. God, I pray that you will be with us as we study and memorize scripture. And as we go through the Bible, that you would speak to us and we would learn everything that you want us to learn. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, y'all. Have a great week. I love you.